Okay, so I'm going to be talking about mine planning during periods of constrained capital. Okay, and so what we're really talking about here is that when we look at the economy today, we've got all sorts of political issues happening that are affecting markets. We've got uh, various inflation and stuff that has caused the central banks to increase their free interest rates, right? Almost in every single country. You know, Japan is really weird. They're down there so with a negative interest rate, but everybody else is up maybe four or five percent. Now, how does this affect us as mine planners? Well, when we increase this free cash flow interest rate, it has to affect things like our discount rate. Okay, because theoretically your discount rate is whatever the guaranteed kind of safe return is, plus an amount for risk, plus an amount for just the risk of your operations, not only political risk, but you know, mine is riskier than a lot of other business investments that you could have out there. And so when you factor in all those things, we might be pushing anywhere between 10 and 15% discount rates that people should be using today. Now, you're gonna have to talk to corporate to figure out exactly what rate you're going to be using. But when you're factoring that in, that's going to dramatically change your schedule, okay? The other thing you now have to look at is if I have this high discount rate and this high risk and this high cost, if I need to go to a bank in order to get my loan to create my mine, are there alternative investments I could be looking at? Do I want to be putting capital into a new mine that I don't really know what's there, you know, geologic risk, et cetera, or do I want to be putting it into an existing? And then lastly, cash on hand. So, you know, I've already mentioned talking about a bank. If I go to a bank because of these now higher interest rates, because of political risk, geo risk, et cetera, even if I'm a, a proven mining company with, you know, a big operation, if I don't have the cash on hand to start this new mine and I have to get a loan, I might be limited on how much capital I can get. Even if we think we have the cash flow and everything to pay back this operation, even if we, you know, think everything's going to go well, the bank may just not lend us the money that we need. So how can we incorporate these items into our mine planning, Kim. Okay. So first off, I essentially built a model that is a copper gold mine. Okay, so we're gonna have a, a copper stream and a gold stream. Uh, I'm gonna be using MindMax Scheduler for this because that's what I'm familiar with, but you could use other strategic planning tools to do this. Uh, we're going to be having a mill, a leach as two different options for our material. You could also stockpile it to be reclaimed later, or we can send it to waste. Now, all of these processing facilities are going to have variable and fixed costs. So variable cost being a per ton cost, but also a fixed cost. The fixed cost will be whether I send one ton or 10 million tons or some other number in between to the facility, I have to pay this fixed cost because in real life, you know, whether I send 5 million tons or 6 million tons to the mill, I have to have all the same staff. I have to have all the same facilities. The maintenance is still going to be approximately the same. And what you find is if you incorporate this kind of cost structure into your mine planning, the software is generally going to try and fill up those facilities, which is something I want to see for this, this run. Now, I'm looking at a brand new mine you know, kind of going along with this constrained capital. And so because of that, I'm loading this model up with a lot of what we call CapEx, capital expenditures. So I don't currently have a mill. Scheduler is going to have to go through and pick from three different mills at three different throughputs. So each of those is going to have a different capital cost up front. I'm gonna pay it in year one, and then in year two, the mill becomes active. And I've told Scheduler, please only pick one of those for me. Next, we have a leech pad. Leech is a little bit easier in, in ramping up or changing the size of your facility compared to the mill. So what I've done for the leech is I've said, hey, you can spend $65 million for 10 million tons of throughput per year, per year, and you can buy that up to five times. Okay, so it can slowly build that up as it sees fit, or it could you know, buy three pads in year one, and then they'll be useful for the rest of the mine life. Lastly, mining fleet. 
Now, I could have gone in and modeled individual shovels and different sizes of shovels, but that can get a little bit painful when you're looking at life of mine solve times. So what I've gone in, and, and for this example, is we're looking at mining fleets. So it would be $40 million, and that's going to be a shovel and a number of trucks and support equipment for that amount of material. Okay. And all, I've, all of these runs have been run with a 2% optimization tolerance. So later on, when we look at some results, you know, if the third digit is approximately the same, you can consider those results to be the same. Okay. So now I've run this model. So I've run this model and I've ended up with four different cases. So first off, I want my base case. What does this mine look like? Now, when I ran my first base case, I ended up getting uh, eight sets of my mining fleets. My tons moved, got up to 160 million. You can see that I bought two mining fleet units here at the beginning, the very first year, when I could not process material to start doing some pre-stripping. My mining rates are a little bit all over the place, okay? We can see that also here in the material processed. So I bought my 30 million ton mill and I ended up buying three different leach pads. So the mill there is the yellow, the blue is my leach pad throughput. And you can see that even with the fixed cost, the leach was up and down a little bit. And lastly, we have a cash flow here, but the important things to note are the base case in PV was 5.69 billion. And my first period's cash flow was negative $696 million, okay? That's within my budget, within my company's budget, okay? But I don't necessarily like all the variation that we were seeing in the mining. I don't necessarily like the variation we were seeing in the processing. So the next step to this, and this is what, you know, many mine planners are going to go through, at any site is they're gonna run their base case, right? They're gonna see what it looks like. What does the software wanna do? Now that I have a result, I'm gonna go in and start smoothing things and adjusting things to add practicality that's hard to describe to the software. You know, you can't necessarily throw in all these smoothing constraints and stuff at the beginning because maybe you're going to eliminate a schedule that triples the MPV and you need to know that. So I have gone in and I've put in what we like to call difference constraints. And Ian talked a little bit about this in his presentation, is you can go in and throw some difference constraints. So now Scheduler knows that, hey, find your base level. You can go up numbers of mining fleets. Then we want to be consistent, and then you can come down. I just don't want to see you going up and down, up and down, up and down. So you can see here that the green is our direct feed now, the gray is stockpiled material, and the red is reclaimed from the stockpile to meet my different blending requirements. And our mining rate is now nice and smooth. Um, and you know that's something that can be handled. It's a little bit condensed as a shorter mine life. But that's something that can be handled from a hiring and firing and equipment acquisition. Uh, you'll notice we still get up to the same 160 million max mining, but we do it over three years. We've also pre-stripped a whole lot more in that first year, which although has brought cost forward, it also makes it much easier to have ore exposed starting when the mill comes active in year two. What's happened to our processing? You can see that my mill, I'm still buying the 30 million ton mill right from the start. We're going across and then the leach, we slyly buy up three different units. It goes up consistently high and then tapers off. Whereas before the leach was the one that was up and down in our processing facilities. Okay, so very similar. Now here is the problem. Now that I have done this, our NPV is 5.58 billion, which is only a 2% decrease in MPV. Not worried about that. However, in period one, I'm now at negative $935 million. And originally I was looking at negative uh, 680 or so. So that is a $240 million increase in the loan that I would need. And if I hadn't already planned for that, you know, when I was talking to the bank, I may not be able to get that money, okay? So now if I've already gone through that process and we already have our loan in place, I need to make some changes and some adjustments. And now can the software generate a schedule that meets my requirements, but also can I bring down that initial cost without hurting my NPV too much? 
Okay, so that's the question. And that's the experimentation I went through. So first I tried, hey, okay, let's let's put a max constraint on our cumulative MPV. So, or, or sorry, our, our cumulative CapEx. So let me go in and say, hey, scheduler, you can only spend so much on the equipment fleets, so much on the mill and so much on the leach. Is it going to buy a different allocation of these processing facilities? Is it going to buy a different number of mining units in order to stay under my CapEx limit, which I set at $750 million based on what the previous results were looking like? And so I ran that solution. Now what we see here, is it goes up to only 120 million tons of mining. So instead of the 160 million before, we're now down to 120 million, which is one less of my fleets, or sorry, two less of my fleets. We've also pre-stripped a whole lot more material in year one. Now, when I first saw this result, because previously I was only pre-stripping maybe 80 million, we're now up over 100, I thought, uh-oh, I might have just shifted my problem from a capital problem to an operating expense problem with those tonnages. The mill and leach, we'll see that we only went up to 20 million tons. So we chose a smaller mill and uh, a fewer leach pads, and it pushed out the mine life all the way to period 14. Okay, so we used to be back at like period 11. This resulted in this cash flow. So our NPV is now down to 5.43 billion. This is a further 2.7% decrease. And the first period is still at negative $874 million, which means that my first period costs only dropped by 61 million because it had to shove additional operating mining costs into that first period. Okay, so adjusting the max capital hurt my NPV by almost 3%. And it didn't actually fix my problem. So I'm moving on to a different lever. In Scheduler, you can also go in and say, okay, instead of me controlling the CapEx, I'm still going to let it buy the CapEx. But now I'm going to go in and I'm going to say, you have a minimum cumulative profit of negative $750 million. So you can buy as much capital as you want. But if you're going to go over, say, 750, go up to eight. 900 million you already have to have cash flow coming in from the mine in order to pay for those capital improvements okay <laughs> so how can it shift the costs of the operating costs and potentially to buy more capital to shrink that mine life back down get the mpv up but not go below my 750 million dollar available loan whether that's from the bank or from other operations in the company. This is the solution that it came up with. Now you'll see that it decides with those parameters that in year one, I am not going to mine any material. I'm not going to do any pre-stripping. We're going to go straight to 160 million tons in year two. And the problem with that is now I don't actually have any ore available at the start of the year in year two for my mill and for my leach. So I went and said, hey, scheduler, I know you think this is great because it does run on a period basis. I need you to pre-strip at least 50 million tons in the first years. I had got to that 50 million number by going and looking at the results, looking at where the ore was in my early phases. Where could I get to in order to have enough pre-stripping done that I could have ore available on January 1st, which got us here. And now this is looking much more promising. So in the first year, I mined 55 million tons. I put some in the stockpile. Year two, now we're going up <clears throat> to about 120 million tons. So that's the cap that we saw in the cumulative capex. But now in year three, because I have cash coming in, it decides, okay, now I can buy an additional couple fleets to get me back to that 160 number that we've seen that it likes. We can also see that with the cash coming in to pay for this CapEx, we're now back to 30 million tons of capacity on the mill, and we're back to 30 million tons of capacity on the leach. And our cumulative uh, NPV on this is 5.55 billion, which is actually higher than the last two results we saw, essentially the same as the smoothed case. And our negative cash flow in the first period is only $750 million, but I bought all of the same CapEx 
that I previously bought, I just slightly spread it out further when I could pay for it in different years. And that has allowed Scheduler to find a solution with essentially the same MPV within our 2% tolerance as that smooth scenario, but drop the initial outlay in year one by almost $200 million. So between the three scenarios, the first scenario blue here is our smooth, the orange is our 750 million capex limit, and then the third is our seven minimum 750 million cash flow. You'll see that the blue and gray end up getting to the same peak of mining, so the same as our smooth constraint without any final financial limits. We do maintain that gray mining rate a little bit longer compared to the first one, but we did have ore access. And our processing, again, we hit up that 30 million uh, for the mill, only 20 when I controlled the capex, and same thing here with the leach. So, and these are our financials here. So we can see that in the three scenarios, ignoring the base case, because no mine manager was going to accept the up and down on that first base case. Uh, we can see that the NPV of our of our negative 750 million profit minimum there is essentially the same as our smoothed, but that a period one cash flow looks much better at our 750 million limit. So that's 200 million less. I don't have to go to the bank for. I'm not paying interest on. I don't have to have internal IRR paybacks to look at. In period two, same thing. We're down at negative 39 million. We're almost up to zero. Now, we don't have things like land acquisition costs, et cetera, in here, which would affect the actual payback. And then in period three, we're at 494. If you look at the smooth and the min 750 further into future, you'll see that we do hit some worse cash flows later in the mine life. Um, that's why it was preferring the other option when we first solved. But we have now essentially gotten the same MPV, at least close to it. And even a little less is acceptable if it means I can get the loan from the bank uh, without too much of a headache. So now, given the current global economy, if you're comparing two mine plans and we have our current given interest rates, these financial constraints to generate those secondary mine plans with different initial cash flows could become very important to your clients. Okay. Uh, just because either the capital may not be there or they may be looking at allocating capital in different places. Uh, other types of scenarios that can be run like this is you could look at guaranteeing payback within a certain period. So I could load up the you know, cost of land, the cost of uh, permitting, et cetera, into the software and say, hey, I need at least zero cash flow by year four or year five. It could go and run those scenarios compared to your original scenario. You could also look at maybe loading multiple mines in to the same product. And I only have a budget this year of 500 million in CapEx and say, where should I be spending it on different items at different mines?